Hi, my name is Dor Benham Watson. I'm going to tell you a little story about a perspective entitled Hydrophobic Ambivalence, Teetering on the Edge of Randomness. Now, I kind of like that title for two reasons. Second part, Teetering on the Edge of Randomness, I feel like a lot of us can kind of relate to that feeling these days. And the other thing is the first part of the title, Hydrophobic Ambivalence, is really the main story. It's about what happens when oil and water interact with each other. So we all know some things about oil and water interacting. If I take water and I add some oil to it, no surprises, we all know that the oil and the water are going to phase separate. And this process seems to be telling us loud and clear that oil hates water. It's hydrophobic. But there's other materials in nature that are composites of oil and water that seem to send a very mi different message, like clathrate hydrates. There are mountains of these things under the ocean. Blake, what, what does a clathrate hydrate look like? They look just like ice. So I'm, here's some ice. Like We all know that if we light a match to ice, nothing is going to happen. But if we do, because it's not combustible, but if we light a match to a clathrate hydrate, look at that. It burns. It might be easier to see if we turn the lights out, Blake. Clathrate hydrate burns because its structure is like this. It's oil molecules that are surrounded by water. So structures like this seem to be telling us that oil loves to be surrounded by water, whereas this process here seems to say oil hates to be uh, in water. So, um, but what is going to happen if we take two oily molecules like these, tertiary butyl alcohol molecules, and you put them into water? Are they going to aggregate hydrophobically, or are they going to not aggregate hydrophobically? Well, let's, let's do the experiment right here. We'll just put these molecules right into water and see what happens. Well, I don't know. It doesn't look to me like they're really hydrophobically aggregating. What do you think? But, you know, maybe this isn't the best way to do that experiment, right? So, right. so Blake, why don't you tell us like, the better way that you actually did the experiment? Right. Instead, we dissolved real tertiary butyl alcohol in real water. And we did two types of spectroscopic experiments. Raman multivariate curve resolution and femtosecond IR pump probe measurements in collaboration with Heibacher and Sietze van der Post. And what did you find? Well, quite surprisingly, after a detailed analysis of the experimental results, we found that there are no more hydrophobic contacts in solutions containing small oily molecules than in a statistically random mixture. In other words, the hydrophobic interaction free energy is less than thermal energy fluctuations. Wow. So. But that begs the question, uh, you know, how can we make sense of all these things? So small hydrophobic molecules don't seem to interact with each other very strongly, but processes like this are telling us that oil hates water, and other processes that we all know about, like when you mix soap into water, you make micelles with a hydrophobic core, and the cells in our body are made of surfactants also that are hydrophobically driven to aggregate. So how can we put all these pieces together and make sense of it? Well, it turns out that it actually all fits together if you recognize, once you recognize that an oil molecule is going to be uh, uh, driven out of water when it has the opportunity to remove more than about one nanometer squared of its water exposed surface area and put it into oil. So that's what's happening in this oil-water uh, phase separation. The process involved here is a process in which an oil molecule has a choice between being in water or being in oil. In moving from water to oil, it removes more than one nanometer squared of surface area and puts it into water, so it's favorable. Whereas a process like this one here, in which you're bringing two oily molecules next to each other, involves contacts that have less surface area than one nanometer squared, so they're weaker and they don't compete with thermal energy fluctuations. So that's the story.